Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First, I'd like to introduce ourselves. I am Phil Watson. My uh, student number is 1201-2267. And I'm Sam Little, and my student number is 1100 uh, Now, as you can see by the board, we're doing a argument and a presentation which will be short and sweet on whether it's ethical to carry out medical testing on animals. First, what is animal testing? Just so all of you actually understand what it is, not just you know think it's a bad thing. Um, animal testing, it's a test, uh, an experiment that goes for both living and deceased animals. Um, the, there's a lot of controversy over what animals are used and when they're alive, what they go through. But when they are alive, but the there's two super common um, experiments that is always carried out in every country, even still in the UK. Is, it's called the vivisection. This is where the creature, this is quite scary now, we'll let you know now. Um, this is where the animal, no matter what animal it is, apart from grey tape, that is now being banned. Anything similar to humans is now being banned. That is where they are cut, dissection, dissected, or injured while it's still being alive. Still conscious, may may be a morphine or small chemical drug, but they will still be alive. And as you can see, I've put some out here. When they die, oh, it has been removed. They are classed as wasted animals. So as soon as these animals enter laboratories, they are classed as items, an inanimate object, a testing specimen. They're not classed as a being. When they die, they're not deceased or dead. They are classed as wasted. They will be discarded. They'll be disposed of. It's simple as, as, as you can see, it's very controversial how it is. Um, they're used for many different things. It's used for medical purposes, cancer treatments, um, therapy, painkillers. It's used for educational purposes. It's also used for um, commercial purposes. So the foundation. I know I don't want to sound bad for you ladies, but a lot of the products. Um, I know some of it is medicated as well, like in sealer, but, but a lot of that will actually cause the animals to suffer during the process. Obviously, obviously if it's going to be an irritant, they will test the irritant, irritant directly to the animal. So, but that's the same for many shaving foam and a lot of other um, hygiene drugs, hygiene um, ingredients. I'm now going to cover the history. There's a long history of biomedical research in animals. It started in the early Greek 284 to 258 BC. In 1938, the Federal Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act required safety testing of drugs and animals before they could be marketed. This was due to mass poisoning and deaths caused by the drug in the USA called DEG. Likewise, another incident occurred with thalidomide in the late 50s. This is where, where the plain wonder drugs stop headaches, coughs and insomnia aimed at pregnant mothers has an unwanted side effect leading to more than 10,000 children born with missing limbs and other malformations. The above incidents cause harm to humans from the use of substances that have not been first tested in animals. So animal experimentation is to prevent tragedy in humans. Moving on to legalisation, luckily there are strict guidelines to use animal testing in the UK and the EU. The Animal Scientific Procedures Act 1986, known as the ASPA, has devised to transpose European directives on the protection of animals used for scientific purposes. This was enforced on the 1st of January 2013. You now need a license and certificate of de designation granted by the AFPA for testing on an animal. We then have the controversy. I'm sorry if it is spelled wrong, but I'm dyslexic. I know if it is spelled wrong, but I don't know. Right. As you can see by this picture, that is just bad pictures to get. We more than halfway three now look at it. But that is only a. Um, Example, it's not actually harmed, this was done for a different side, so the multiple was actually harmed. Right. For the controversy, 
this is what people think of, of obviously how many new team like annual lovers would think and how you know how all the organizations treat it. But the truth is these experiments most, if not nearly all, of these animals will suffer and quite often die during the experiment. If not, they will die after. Obviously, they are for the experiment's purposes. Once the experiment has been um, complete, they will dispose of these specimens. Obviously, they are not being, they have been tested on, they have been tarnished, they will just be disposed of. But animal lovers, personally, Myself being an animal lover, but over a dozen pets now. Um, I believe the same as what I found on many the PDSI, PDSA sites and PTA sites. PETA sites, sorry. Um, that most people believe that animals belong in nature. We do not belong in labs where they are um, born by the test tube, where they've been genetically grown themselves, obviously, within a room, without a room. They are still animals. They still have the right to live. They have the right to live without suffering. Um, people do understand. Some people that are educated, as I'm sure you guys are, do understand that there are actually alternatives. But most people aren't sure of what alternatives are. But we will shortly cover the alternatives. Um, but the people that don't understand the alternatives, um, rather than the people that do believe that animals sorry that animals do deserve the exact same right as humans. Now there is a problem if we want animals to have the same rights as humans, that's gonna cause mayhem. Um, the human right is the humans can vote. I don't think any of you want a cat or a dog to vote. I don't think that would be very productive. However, they do deserve similar rights. So um, they have the right to be um, to live in safety and not be exploited, not used for these experiments, even though we do benefit from these experiments personally, it's, in most views, it's just greed, greed for companies, greed for humans, it's against, definitely for humans, if the human gets ill, we want to get better. Um, some humans that do want to get better, they try to justify the animals that die, suffer um, in these experiments. Um, two examples of these justifications, if you can call them justifications, is people believe, um, religious people believe that animals were put on this earth for us to use, to eat, to make medication, if you believe in you know, the theory of evolution, um, for us to do whatever we want with them. We are the hierarchy, we can do whatever we want. Other people think, you know, general people, non uh, religious people think they're not as intelligent at all as us. They can't think, they can't reason. So, how are they going to feel that pain is human? If you can't describe suffering, if you can't say suffering, they numb themselves out to suffering that actually these cause. We now have the three R's. The three R's are a set of principles that scientists are encouraged to follow in order to reduce the impact on animals. These include reduction, refinement and replacement. Reduction is used to reduce the impact on animals. It is improving experimental techniques and techniques of data analysis and sharing information with other researchers. Refinement is refining the experiment to care for animals and reduce the suffering. It involves using less invasive techniques and better medical care as well as better living conditions. And then we have replacement, which is replacing experiments on animals with alternatives. It's about using computer models, studying human volunteers, using epidemiological studies and cell cultures. I'm all right, this one is my resources to so let that little cute pop that's not being harmed until the wrong bit, an advertising company. Right, there's quite a lot of, I would say, controversy, confusion between animal <coughs> and animal welfare. They are two completely different things. Animal rights is the right to um, live without being exploited, being protected from being used for um, medical drugs, things for human greed. The welfare is the direct cruelty, slavery, the murder, assault, you know, the things that you can get arrested for. 
So obviously there's a lot of confusion there. So if you get arrested for it, you talk about that. People that don't get arrested for it, say it's for science, it's probably right. Um, but some good news is America, they've actually advanced our ASPCA, formed from the ASPCA, which was, ASPA, which was the, uh, the Animal Science Procedures Act, which was formed in 1986, as Sam has already explained. They have now stopped some, quite, quite a lot, we haven't got the biggest criminal children's schools, quite a lot of animals in the USA, thanks to the FDA, are not allowed to be tested on. Most dogs aren't allowed to be tested on a lot of great apes. They were the first ones to introduce it. A lot of similar animals to humans are not allowed to be tested on. However, some creatures, unfortunately, like mice, they don't have a voice. They are classed as rodents, so they can still be tested on in whatever quantity and however the scientists feel. Now I've got medical advances. Research involving laboratory animals often leads to many breakthroughs in medicine that improve people's lives and hold promise for additional diagnoses, treatments and cures. Just a few examples include breast cancer using mice, Parkinson's disease using monkeys and Alzheimer's disease using rodents. There are many other benefits to improve the quality of life for millions of people by using animal research. There are quite a few alternatives in animal testing. Animal testing research has been greatly criticised, particularly from animal rights groups, who argue that animals are treated cruelly, yet many good things have come from it. Although many key questions can still only be answered by animal studies, non-animal methods now account for around 90% of medical testing and include mathematical and computer models, advanced tissue and cell cultures, and scanning technology. A model has now been made out of glass to study blood flow without using animals called Mrs. Einstein. It has all the major arteries of the body represented in it. With all the and with all the major arteries of the body, this model provides research teams with the best possible venue for device testing. All the full chambers of the heart are placed along with the coronary arter arteries and veins to allow for stent and defibrillator lead placement. And then, what we personally think, obviously you guys may have a completely different opinion. Um, we'll tell you what we think, but a little bit of history before we tell you. Believe it or not, animal testing, animal research, has been going on since 384 before Christ. It's been going on for millennia. It's been going on since the times of Greek, where um, I think it was Archimedes, I don't quite know, so an old gent, before he practiced on his, uh, practice, sorry, before he operated on his um, patients, he would go and test on a live pig. Obviously, back then, that's taken, sorry. However, since the 50s, since Sam explained, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people have died, whether reported or not, from non-medical testing. So since the 50s, it has been heavily, extremely heavily argued that it's wrong. That's when things have started to take a turn. So, is it acceptable with the evidence? Personally, we don't find it is acceptable for non-medical research. However, under some very strict circumstances, we believe it can be considered. Very, very slack there can be considered. Because if, um, if it was like a child or a baby versus a puppy or something else, Obviously, humans would then say, of course, it would be the child. Um, cancer, that is getting, you know, it's rapidly growing now. We would rather pick a cancer saving drug to save millions of people worldwide for the cost of a few rodents, a few lizards, you know, reptiles, which are now operated on. So, under certain circumstances, just to conclude, it's, it can be acceptable but only under certain circumstances. Thanks to the ASPCA, ASPA, sorry, they are given as a guideline to make sure animals do not suffer um, without a reason. If nothing good is going to come directly from that animal suffering, 
If there's not going to be a direct report from that animal, it does not get concluded now. So under some circumstances, yes, it is acceptable. Thank you for watching. Does anybody have any questions? Any at all? Um, in, in your view, wouldn't it be better to test on apes and to point to humans than other animals? Yes. Well, personally, I would because I don't have an ape. I've got many other animals. But they are one of the closest genetic um, mammals to humans. So it's, to me personally, it feels like murder. You know, it's so close. It's like most of the DNA we have is shared with great apes, monkeys, gorillas, orangutans. We share very, very similar DNA. That's the main reason why it has been made illegal now. But last year, before the enforcement came in place on the 1st January this year, 0.1% um, of experiments was tested on great, great apes, which is any type of monkey. But for most humans, obviously people have different opinions, most humans feel it's extremely cruel to inflict damage on something so similar to ourselves. That's why many people will carry out experiments on something that does not resemble a human. You know, something with four legs, something with you know, red eyes, something totally different. Um, it's been proven, I believe, <coughs> I believe the figure is 98%, um, that pigs are genetically 98% Yes, they are. So yes, so that's why it started, obviously, in 384 BC. That's where it first discovered, that's why it was pigs rather than <coughs> any other mammal at the time. But, um, personally, I have to say, I haven't done research on pigs. I just looked at a general survey of, well, it wasn't a general survey, a statistic what animals are commonly used in the UK. Obviously, we live in the UK, we want to know what animals are going to go in these experiments. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is our turf, we don't want um, cruelty on our doorstep. So, I can say pigs, under none of the statistics, I see pigs on the statistics. It covered the most popular animals, dogs, cats, mice, rats, um, birds, well, pheasants. Become the most popular ones, of which will cause a reaction. Are there any more? Any more? I've got a question. What was your topic? The topic was is it ethically acceptable for um, was it companies, mm -hmm. businesses to carry out medical experiments on animals? Animal testing, sorry. Medical animal testing. So it was for medical purposes that you were doing? Medical testing, yes, medical strictly. That's why we're focusing on, you know, cancer, Parkinson's disease, you know, obviously. We didn't want to, at first we were actually going to do medical and non-medical. But the time was a big issue. Now, now we've got way over time, which we were... No, you're not. You still have two minutes. It's two yeah. minutes until to 20, so... Mm -hmm. So that's two minutes after we were found. We did downstairs half an hour ago and we hit 10 minutes and gone. What I was asking about is just because the official topic was uh, to focus on non-medical research. But you know, you've been talking about medical research only cases. Was it? Yeah, because you said that we could choose like any question, so we could. But I also said you have to have it if we prefer. <laughs> I do. I do apologise on both. Yeah, on both of us. It's you okay. Um, you mentioned um, mm -hmm. towards the beginning of your presentation. Yeah. Um, that religious people think that, that animals are here yes, to be used by humans. Yes. Which religion are you referring that to? That is Christianity. Is it? Yes. Christianity, Adam and Eve, derived from that. Just, just to expand on that, you were you alluded that the animals are used to uh, um, help us evolve. Yes, uh, that's the uh, evolution uh, theory. Exactly. Um, but you said that during uh, the religious people believe that? Yeah, I think uh, I think I spoke that wrong. I think I was going to break it wasn't that. Yeah. I'm a bit on the edge at the minute, so I've been trying to act cool, but I'm not. Are there any more? Anyone? Oh, I've got a question. Have you ever of holding the home or not? Holding this home? Yeah, it was, it was I can't remember which university it was. It was a program which could download onto a computer or game console, whereby <coughs> your system is in use. If you want to use it but it's gone, yeah. it, it uses a network of computers all over the country to artificially create 
Sal Fulton, and I try and find out why Parkinson's happened, why Alzheimer's happened. You, did, you did the alternative to the interesting. That's good, I'm going to look at that. What's it called? Fulton, I think it's finished now. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.